Hello and welcome everybody to 1996. In 1996, I was in high school. What were you doing in 1996? In 1996, golf companies hadn't realized that they can dampen the sound of their stainless steel cavity back irons. This was before the Cleveland VAS, whatever, 792 or whatever, where they stuck a little damper on the back of their club. We're like, hey, it doesn't sound as clacky. This was still in that era. This was the end of that era of clackiness, right? So the Ping I, Ping I2, everybody's trying to compete with Ping I2, and then they're coming out with things like this, Titleist, you know, DCI, oversized plus, and no damper, right? I and mean, how hard is it to just, you know, stick a damper on here? You guys know what time of year it is when I have bows out. Black Friday's next week, everybody's just Thanksgiving shopping, woo! Maybe I'll make two videos next week. We'll see about that. So either way, this is just another entry, right, into the realm of stainless steel cavity backs. Let's go have a closer look. So you can see here on the back, I mean, you can spot this from space. DCI, black triangle, line over it, Titleist in the cavity, and on the top line here, oversize plus. And it, I really like this no-nonsense cavity. They didn't put any decorations in here. They didn't make it extra complicated, no funny overhangs. It's just a cavity. No attempt to deaden the sound. It's just a stainless steel iron, and it is what you expect it to be. This is a four iron you can see on the sole. It has the iron number down here by the toe. And there's very little offset on this. An oversized iron with little offset. Something that I really can relate to. This is something I like to look down at. It has a large face here. You can see no nonsense. Long gone are the days of putting little stars or or diamonds on the side here. You know, just looks very plain. Nice, simple top line. It is rounded, so it looks smaller at a dress. Not too bad. We move up to a single ring gold ferrule. Stepped steel shaft, you can see right here. Head made in the USA, shaft made in Japan. Anyway, you can see all this stuff right here. Titleist Tri Special Regular Flex. This is my sticker just to remind me what year. And then this is a Titleist. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but there's a spline on the shaft. You know how like they have the aligned grips? Well, even back in 1996, they were doing that. It's funny, the more things change, the, the more they stay the same. Looking right here, it says made in the USA, Golf Pride. Not sure if any of that's gonna show up. And that's what we have here. We have what looks like a very predictable, plain, Titleist DCI oversized iron. I hit this on the range, let's go have a look at that footage. This feels like an iron. It's a four iron and it has that big face which builds a little bit of confidence. It doesn't have a lot of offset, which I like. I don't like tons of offset, even in my long irons. Now, you guys know my criticism about all the Titleist irons I've made before. They're just boring. Does that make sense? It's just, you look at them and it's just like, is there anything visually exciting about these? And you know, no, there isn't. Titleist is pure golf. The joy, like you guys know what I'm talking about, golfers. You're out there on the fairway. It's you, the green. That's what you're looking at with your scoring irons. Maybe four iron isn't that, but it has been for me in the past. And so you're looking at that and you're like, all right, I have to hit that green. And what does it take to do that? And you, you line up, you take your backswing, you, you hit that just right. And it just feels like butter. <laughs> and that ball just flies straight, lands on that green. It's like, yes. You don't hit a golf ball and 
oh wow, this is so pretty. I love it. It's so pretty. I'm going to put a bow on it. And it's you know, barrettes in it. You know, that's not how you golf. It's, I get the mud off of it. All right, put it back in your bag. Some people don't even wipe the mud off of it. It's just like, put it back in the bag. Clack. So there's kind of this, what are you looking for? And at that point, okay, so pure golf. Are those pure golfers looking for a stainless steel cavity back? I submit that they were not. Because you're going to go out and buy a, you know, a blade, right? A forged blade. So... Looking back, it's easy to criticize this club of just like, blah, uh, uh. But there are two aspects to this, okay? So there's the passionate, and that's what I like here on this channel, right? I'm all about the, like, let's look at the most exciting, ridiculous things where they're just going crazy. And then there's the other side of it, where there are legitimate people who, you know, it's like over the last couple of years, golf, outdoor sports, you know, has taken off. It's like, I want to get out with some friends, be outside in the open where it's safer and not recirculated air, just sharing everybody's germs. I want to get into a set of irons for cheap. And it's like, oh, well, if you're looking for some really well-engineered, solid, no-nonsense irons that you can take out on the course and not be ashamed of and hit well, I submit that these... And because they're boring, they don't attract the attention of like investors or collectors. No collectors are running out saying, we need to buy all of the Titleist DCIs from 1996. Nobody is saying that. And so that leaves these open. I've seen these go on sale and prices vary so much. And after this video, it might influence. I hope it doesn't. But I've seen these go for like $60 plus like $15 shipping. You know, it's like for under you know, with tap. So it'll be under $90. Under $100, you can get a set of very reasonable irons with very reasonable shafts with even playable grips sometimes. You know, that's a great deal. Yeah, you're not going to impress anybody. But it gets you out on the course with a solid set of irons that will last you, you know, decades if you want. So from the excitement standpoint, from the collectible standpoint, from the investing standpoint, no way. No way. But from the let's go golfing standpoint, there's nothing wrong with these. These are great and they're very affordable at the making of this video. So check them out. Let me know your thoughts. Do you love these to death? Let me know if you love these and you think these are the greatest irons ever made. As usual, huge thank you to my patrons. You can support us on Patreon. I post a couple behind the scenes videos or pictures every month. It's just general support. You can also support us by visiting our Amazon shop. I have a link in the description below. I am an Amazon associate. I make proceeds from qualifying purchases. Thank you so much for watching. I am the Vintage Golfer.